Hi, and welcome to Jargon Busting, where we break down the key terms that we use in networking. Remember, this is just one video in the Extreme Academy series. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get all of the latest content. Thank you. Good day, and welcome to Intro to Networking. Let's get right into the bits and bytes of the course. Whoa, 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 John. I gotta stop you right there before you get on your acronym kick. I could see it, I could feel it coming. Bits and bytes, the heck are you talking about? Well, before John gets on a roll here, throughout the IT industry, we have lots of terminology, words, things we call acronyms. I have a feeling you're gonna hear John mention a few of those today as he's talking about Extreme Academy and some of the course descriptions. Don't be worried, there's meaning behind all of these things. And certainly at first, it can feel like somebody's speaking a foreign language to you when we're talking about technology. But I'm here to help support you and talk you through and translate, if you will, some of the verbiage and acronyms. I think I have a feeling John's gonna spew out at you over the next couple of minutes. This terminology has been built up in our industry and companies over the years and really is just part of our industry vernacular when you get into technology. But it shouldn't feel intimidating or a, be a barrier to your learning. So. With that, let's just let's John continue uh, and see what kind of jargon he's got for us. We're going to cover all of the fundamentals of networking, from the AP to the switch to the router. All right, hold on. I gotta stop you again, John. AP, switch, router, what the heck is that thing? You know, the best analogy that I can think of is think of those things like roads and highways for us today and how we navigate from point A to point B in a car. We want to go from school to work. We want to go from home to vacation. How we navigate is on the roads. Some re roads require one lane. Some roads require two, four lanes, six lanes, depending on, again, location, how many cars need to be on the road at the same time, the speed the cars are moving and traveling. Think of that just like APs, access points, network switches, network routers. There's sim it's simply technology that provides roads for all of our devices and applications to travel on. In fact, the devices you use every day, your smartphone, your iPhone, uh, your laptop, uh, your iPad, think of these as just cars. It's a vehicle to allow your applications to traverse from point A to point B. And in fact, the people inside the cars, when we're traveling and driving on the roads, those of us inside the cars, we're the payload, right? Think of that as the application sitting on your iPhone, your laptop, iTunes, uh, Twitter, Facebook, your email. Those are simply all, that's all just payload um, that you use your device, your vehicle, if you will, to transmit onto the information superhighway. We'll review how these devices fit into the LAN, WAN, WLAN, and MAN. Man, I am not a fan of all this jam, John. Uh, honestly, LAN, WAN, WLAN, MAN. LAN is simply an acronym for local area network. WAN is wide area network. WLAN is wireless local area network. And MAN is metropolitan area network or a metro LAN. The analogy of these, these are just small towns versus large cities um, at varying distances from one another. To go from your hometown to your neighboring town, that could be a short walk or a bike ride, different vehicle required. But to go from your town to say Hong Kong requires a completely different vehicle. That's air travel or boat and car and bus and many other things that would be much slower. So it all depends on how fast you wanna get from point A to point B will dictate what type of network technology you need. We'll compare and contrast edge, distribution, aggregation, core, and DC. Another set of acronyms, edge, distribution, aggregation, core, DC, or otherwise known as data center. These are actually places, what we call places in a network. An analogy I like to use here is think of, you wanna send a letter. You simply take your letter, you drop it into your mailbox. That would be the edge. That's the starting point of the delivery of said letter. Right now, the mail carrier picks up this letter, they bring it to the local post office. 
Think of that as the distribution center. All mail employees are bringing all the letters to be sent and received to come through the post office. That could be the analogy there is a distribution. It's the same in the networking world. A lot of traffic and applications converge to one place to figure out its next stop in delivery. Think of that just like a post office, a distribution. Now that letter, as it leaves distribution, may be required to take an air flight if it's a long distance uh, destination. That may require it goes through a larger hub or core hub. Again, places in the network, edge distribution, aggregation core, just think of when your letter traverses from your mailbox to the post office to a larger distribution center via air or ground freight and then back again. That's all we're talking about. It's just places along that distribution path. Once you've mastered that, we'll dive into the seven layers of the OSI model. Seven layers of what? OSI model? John, hold on here. We got to stop on this one. So OSI, first, what the heck is that? Well, that's a, a standard. It's called Open Systems Interconnection Model. And you're gonna learn about that in module three of this course, but let me just simply, again, apply a simple analogy. It's essentially just a framework and a model for us to describe a way to communicate through a network, right? So again, back to my road analogy, think of the road infrastructure Anytime you want to build a road, it requires some fundamental things. Well, first of all, how are you going to get with, where's the road going to take you from where to where you got to define that. What's the path the road takes you got to define that. What will be the substrate of the road? It'll be gravel, pavement, concrete. What is that? The road requires signs so you can follow signs for directions. Um, a road is useless without cars. So, you need to figure out how many cars will the road support. So for the car to run efficiently, the car has to have round tires, not square tires, right? So there's these very fundamental basics, these standards, this framework by which roads are engineered and designed. Networks are the exact same way. To connect an application to a network, it has to follow a certain standard for it to function properly. That's simply all the OSI model is and what it defines. You'll learn about that in module three. Let's not forget all of the fun and excitement of TCP IP 802.11 and all of the other protocols. <laughs> this is funny. John can barely pronounce a couple of these acronyms, uh, but think about these things as instructions on how you pack your car most efficiently before you take a long road trip. Now, the cool thing is with a proper set of instructions, you can instruct anybody to pack your car and send you on your way only if you tell them what to pack and how to pack it so that everything fits in your car. Every vehicle on the road is carrying cargo, but with a proper set of instructions and understanding what kind of cargo, how to pack it, you could send any vehicle on the road efficiently. So again, think about that as we're talking about these things like TCP IP 802.11 and other, we call those protocols. Those are just simply instructions to tell application developers how to pack their car to send, in this case, in the technology world, their application uh, connectivity and data out into the network so it gets from point A to point B as it should. Finally, we'll discover the cloud. Ah, yes, the cloud. Now, we're not talking about the clouds you look outside up in the sky, those big, white, fluffy things. Cloud is simply a vehicle to deliver an experience. We all use cloud every single day in our business, school, or personal lives. Things like Gmail, Netflix, iTunes, Facebook, those are all cloud applications. And again, cloud is 100% about simplifying and delivering these really effortless experiences in whatever we're trying to accomplish with technology. FaceTime, socialize with our friends or family, communicate, create business plans, do homework, whatever that may be, we're likely, very likely, using a cloud application to execute those things. And lastly, John, why don't you take us home, but please keep it simple. I know you're all gonna get a lot out of this course as you take a big step into a new world.